and we're back in my truck so let's see looks like uh the last couple of mornings the lobby area has been smelling like gas all right so let's check it out so here we go <laughs> And it looks like we got some VRVs and mini splits and stuff. They're saying they're smelling gas. I've had this thing running the entire time. I got nothing. I don't smell any gas. Do they even have a gas unit? Okay, so here's a gas unit here. So if anything, it's gonna be this one because everything else is just heat pumps. So I'm thinking it's a morning warm-up situation. Basically, this one's probably got VAVs attached to it. So early in the morning because that's when they say they smell is when they first come in what will happen is it goes into a morning warm-up so it'll just kind of heat up the building with the gas heat then after that it'll maintain it uh maintain the different zones with a viv system um so i need to see if i can get this thing to fire up into uh, uh gas heat and see if it's igniting properly so we'll have to go from there there's a gas regulator there I'm not so sure if that's supposed to be upside down or not. Let me know in the comments. Could have sworn they're supposed to be right side up, but who knows. We're going to go ahead and see if we can find the controller here and see if we can force her into uh, gas heat. All right, so it looks like we got an alarm. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, see the little ringing bell up there? So let's see what's going on. And hopefully I have the password. Oh, there's an active alarm. Low pressure problem. Okay. Okay, so low pressure. Let's see what else we got. Dirty filter. Oh, they're not maintaining this thing. Surprise, surprise. So yeah, we might have an issue with this. Um, let's go ahead and check the filters. So it's looking like this one's going to be a lack of maintenance. So all the filters are completely plugged. I mean, look at this. It's just kerplumped. You see, there's the sun. Yeah. And then. That this recovery wheel thing popped off. All right, so yeah, we need to get some filters in this bad boy. Uh, stat uh, since I reset it, it did looks like it did clear the, the active alarm with low pressure, so that's a low pressure on the refrigerant side. Um, yeah, it's it's cooling right now. I, t I did take out like one or two of the filters just because it was I couldn't get it back in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and turn this off. So I am going to actually, I don't want to just kill the power. So we're going to go to user control mode right here. And it's on. I'm going to put it to off. Oops. everything off we'll let everything shut off and then um, I'll kill the power what's going on with this is there's this this like wrap that goes around the wheel and it got peeled off that's what all this junk was um, so I guess when that happened it's what caused this belt to fall off so it's all wrapped underneath itself so I don't know if I can get that back on there so we'll, we'll see how that goes I didn't have four inch filters, but I noticed that there's a two inch gap here and I could fit two inch filters. So I was able to get the two inch versions of this. So I'm gonna pop those in there. I got these on order, so we'll come back and, and you know, replace them. So this is one of the four inches. Where's the sun? There's the sun now, no light. So let's go ahead and get these switched out. So I need to get that filter out from way back there. And we got our filter puller by Subco. If you like this tool, shameless plug it's on my amazon store feel free to buy one they really come in handy and the nice thing about it is the end is magnetic so if you drop a screw or something you can use it pick up screws too and you can use it to pull out filters that are far that you can't reach so, and they're not super expensive either oops dropped it picking it up So if, if you're working on one of these daikins, just so you know, I just put these arrows on here. The filters that go in here go that way. So air flows that way. The ones down here go that way, that way. And then these go that way. So don't mess that up because this guy totally messed it up as you can see. Um, but you can tell it's been parachuted this way. So yeah, that's he just put it backwards. All right, well, I got the thing on there. Um, I can't spin it around. 
I think this is how it goes because it doesn't fit in here unless it's that. So whatever, it's gonna work now, see? But that whole metal strip thing was just completely messed up, so I had to take it out. So at least it'll work. We got all our filters put in. So we're gonna go ahead and power back on and go through the testing and we're gonna check the uh, gas burners and see what the heck is going on with that because they keep the original call was uh, they could smell gas. So it's gotta be for the morning warm up. And getting this on here was a pain in the butt, but believe it or not, my Wera, my big old fat 3 8 uh, Allen key, totally saved the day. I was able to just kind of put it in there and stretch it. So, awesome. Uh, yeah, loving my wares. All right, so if you're not doing anything for long enough, it locks you out, so you can see I only have four screens. So I need to enter my password. And so you just go into that and hit enter and then you scroll through the numbers. All right, so now you can see I actually have 16 screens that I can get into. So uh, I've turned off the unit. We're gonna leave that off for now. And you can see the status right now is uh, unit status off man, which means off manual. Uh, we're gonna go to manual control and this is where we can test stuff. So you see how it's set to normal? That means it's, you know, it's gonna control itself. So when we want to test it we have to change that so we select it we turn it to manual control enter so now we can actually do stuff now let me see if I can find our heat wheel I want to see if that thing will spin gas heat heat uh, ah, here we go recover uh, recovery wheel so we can go ahead and turn that on Let's see if it's turning. One thing's fixed, sort of. I need to call Dyke and find out what that that metal tape stuff around it is. So now I know my recovery wheel's working good. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our um, with our uh, gas stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, and then we're gonna close up that uh, compartment, and then we'll. Uh, open this up and see what's going on with the burners. See, make sure it's actually lighting. Alrighty, well, this is a little concerning. I mean, this thing is from like not even a year old and it's got all kinds of soot. Look at that, that's nasty. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the flame sensor and the igniter just to roll those issues out. Yeah, and so the manifold pressure is Maximum is 3.5 inches and 1.6 is the minimum. From what I can tell, here's the adjustment screw. Oh, it's loose. Oh, maybe somebody did actually adjust it. That's good. All right, cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what it does and then we'll go from there. All righty, so um, this looks like it's modulating. I think we need to go ahead and turn gas stage heat on first. I can't remember if you do that first and then, yeah, okay. Then we go to heat valve and we set that to, we want 100%. Okay, now it's gonna do its thing. There we go. Okay, we got ignition. Flame sensor is uh, pretty dirty. Uh, it's not terrible, but look at this igniter, it's just, and then I'm gonna check the gas pressure. So the way it works is this is, you know, closed and then it opens and then this will actually regulate the gas pressure. And then this is a two speed inducer. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we need to see if the inlet is proper. So if we look over here, we should have an inlet of 14 inches of water column. And that's our maximum. And our minimum is five, so we're gonna want at least like 10. Okay, um, our maximum would be 3.5, so pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this at 100%, adjust the gas pressure to 3.5, and then go from there. Well, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Come on, focus. Yeah, right? Much better. Much better. All right, and our flame sensor, nice and clean. On focus. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. All right, anyway, let's put her back together and then we'll get set up to test the gas pressure. So we got her all set up. This is our adjustment here. So this is our outlet, this is our inlet. Uh, you could, so, oh, I got to zero this out. 
So you can see here that we have zero piss science because I have the gas off. Let's go ahead and kick it on. So we want to see right around 17. Holy moly. So something's up with this regulator. It's not doing its job. I'm going to see if I can adjust this down a little bit because I know you're supposed to do this when you're testing it, but that is ridiculously high. What's happening, this is why we have all this soot. It's improper combustion. Too much fuel, not enough air because what will happen is, let's say it goes to 50%. The gas pressure is probably like way higher than 3.5 so it's burning super rich so let's see if we can adjust this thing all right so we're going to go ahead and start adjusting this thing trying to get it down to yeah i don't think i'm gonna be able to adjust this down all righty so i'm gonna change out that regulator before i continue on this so i've turned the gas off it's a like i don't know even know what that equals here we'll put it up on the screen so i'm going to convert 50 inches of water column to psi this gas valve is rated for 2 PSI, so I'm pretty sure that's higher. I don't know if it is. You'll see right now. Um, but we're going to start with changing that out, and then we'll come back, set the gas pressure, um, and then fire it and see what happens. But when it does shoot, uh, or when it fires, it smells like sulfur. So I'm pretty sure it's burning way rich. Uh, so that's improper combustion. So that's why we got all this black soot stuff all over the place. So it's just not burning properly because there's more gas and not enough flow or something. So um, anyway, yeah, so I'll be back with a new regulator and we'll go from there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change up the regulator, set the pressure and then make sure everything's go, working fine. So we're using a spud wrench. This is basically like a pipe wrench, but it's flat. It's great for gas valves and unions. This prevents moisture from getting in there so it won't freeze up there. Super expensive, but saves a lot of money in the long run. Well, so now we're going to go ahead and turn on the gas, see if we have leaks. Looks good. Let's set the gas pressure now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and try to get it close. Um, and then when it's running, we'll dial it in. So we're turning on the gas. inches of water column so that's a lot better than 59 so we take the lid off here and that's where we adjust it all right so we got our gas pressure down we're at 3.5 um, and our inlet's at 10.31 while it's running it's, uh, it's definitely a lot better it doesn't smell like sulfur anymore um, so we're gonna let it run for a little bit and then double check our pressures again because every time you adjust it It takes a minute for it to kind of stabilize and then sometimes it can go back up or down So we'll see how it goes. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes All right, so it's been about five minutes um, The pressure has been kind of bouncing between 3.50 and 3.49. So I'm gonna call it good All right, so we got our cap back on we got our test ports tightened up. We got that all closed up so now we just need to close all our panels. All right, so to put it back into normal mode, we go all the way to the top where it says manual control. And we're gonna switch that back to normal. All right, and then we're gonna go back. And then we go to control mode. And then we're going to switch it back over to uh, auto slash net. Okay, and now it is back in normal mode. And now we just wait and it'll figure out what it needs to do. So we're going to go ahead and close up this panel. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you come across one of these Daikin DOA systems. Or it's a DOA's. Um, I think it's called the Daikin Outdoor Air System. I don't I don't know. Oh yeah, and one more thing I forgot. Make sure you clear the, the, the alarm log. Right? So you'll see, so you, yeah, we see dirty foot. We know all that, okay? So we're going to go ahead and go here and we'll put that to clear yog. Yes. And then it will clear it. When we hit back, you can see now it says zero. So always do that. Don't forget to clear your locks. And then we don't have to you know, lock it out. It'll lock out after some time. I forget how long it is. Yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools that I use, make sure you buy them on my Amazon store. Thanks for watching.